Hello, I'm pleased to have Lawrence Schwartz with us today. Lawrence is Senior Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer with Aspen Technology. Welcome, Lawrence. Oh, my pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. So, Lawrence, the last time we talked, we talked about a lot of interest in uh, digital transformation in different uh, regions. What can you tell me about the progress uh, since the last time we talked? Sure. It's been uh, an amazing uh, year, a lot of activity and a lot of interest. We see a lot of uh, work going from pilots to actual production and a lot of uh, interesting developments. Particularly in our space, we see things happening around the, the areas we like to call, you know, what's happening on the safer side, greener, what's keeping things running longer and faster. And just to give you some thoughts on each one of those, right? If you look at what we've seen on the, on the safety side, um, some of the ability to go in and put instrumentation on different equipment and look for failures, particularly take a, we've got one customer who does uh, pulp and paper, right? And they put this on their equipment. They're able to see in a kiln if something could actually lead to a fire a couple of weeks before it does, right? So you can think about, you know, progress on the safety side. In terms of looking at what is having an impact for emissions, we have large companies we work with in the petrochemical space that are looking at large equipment, again, that could fail, millions of dollars of potential impact, but also what's the impact to emissions and looking at how that can really play a role there. And then just one other example we see is, you know, what do you see in the impact in terms of being able to run better and more efficiently? And we've got some large customers who have multiple different plants, you know, over a dozen different plants, supply chains that they're trying to manage from all around the world, you know, over two dozen different ports of entry for kind of systems and information coming in, as well as supplies. And once you put digital transformation in there, they can start having savings of over 25% on inventory, uh, as well as the lead times that they have. So it's really impacting a lot of our customers in a lot of different ways. So it's an exciting time for us. Mm, good, yeah. So as, as interest uh, moves more into reality, because obviously yeah. you've, got a, you've made a lot of headway uh, in, the, in the past uh, little while, what advice would you give organizations today that are, that are moving forward and embarking on their, their first project or the scale up of the last pilot project? Yeah, no, it's a great question. And, um, you know, it really starts with, uh, you know, start with a project, you know, start somewhere, right? Um, and find something that's of high value. So, you know, in the chemical space, as an example, hypercompressors, right? Air, these are big pieces of equipment that can fail when they go down. It's not something that you have readily available to replace normally. So that's a real problem, right? It shuts down production as well. So if you look at a real tangible problem, start with that and then look at ways that you can apply digital technology to, to advance that, get over that downtime, you know, you can start seeing some real value. But beyond that kind of technology choice and where to deploy it, there's also a lot of work that has to be done on the collaboration side, right? So oftentimes the people who are in the maintenance department aren't necessarily talking to the people in the process area, right? So making sure that that interaction is happening, making sure companies can support that becomes important as well. And another area, certainly on digital technologies, is trust, right? You've got people who have been doing this for 30 plus years, 40 years in their career. They know how the systems work. You know, and there's gonna be some hesitancy on some of these digital technologies as they come in. So when you bring in something new, you've gotta show that, uh, for example, if you're looking at potential problems, you know, if you show a lot of false positives, people will discount it pretty quickly, and then that's the end of the deployment. So you've kind of got to build up that understanding, that acceptance of the new technology, and show value pretty quickly. So, yeah. So, um, artificial intelligence and yeah. machine learning have got tremendous potential across the across the industries, yeah. and and we see manufacturers and industrial asset owners are changing their focus, you know, slightly towards the, the environmental and the green initiatives. Can yeah. you talk a little bit about what you're doing with uh, these technologies to help improve things like sustainability? Yeah, no, sustainability and dealing with emissions has been a real focus, you know, for our customers, for investors as well. We just redid our own ESG report as a company and we kind of see that coming up in more and more conversations. And I think there are some real huge areas where there's some value to be captured in here, right? If you look at flares and kind of the impact that they have worldwide, so that ends up being a quarter billion of tons of carbon dioxide emissions that come out of that. And that's as much as 90 plants running, right? So if you could take that and help minimize that with the right technology and right uh, solutions, you know, there's a real opportunity there. Another potential area is when we talk about shutdowns that I mentioned before, there was a refinery in California that in 2017 had to shut down and restart. 
and the amount of emissions that they saw there, they saw over 30,000 uh, pounds of sulfur dioxide. Uh, that was more than they normally emit over two years, right? So huge impact. So if you could look at ways, again, to avoid those startups and shutdowns, huge environmental impact. The last area is, you know, if you look at what's happening now with these new regulations coming into effect, IMO 2020 just came into effect earlier this year. And that really is driving, you know, some of the older refineries to think about how can they get more out of their process optimization? How can they get more out of the crew that they start with? And that requires new technology as well. So a lot of opportunities to have an impact on emissions, sustainability and other areas. Good. OK. Yeah. So another, uh, my last question. Um, so Aspen Tech recently uh, purchased a, a dynamic optimization company, GDOT yeah. uh, product. Uh, it's really interesting. And I know Aspen Tech has always been a leader with uh, DMC3 and the optimization applications. W w where do you see that uh, techno technology going? How do you see it really improving operations? Yeah, so it's interesting. Some of the panels that uh, we had earlier today talked about some of these technologies that have been in plants have been around for almost 50 years, you know, basic control technology that, that different companies have embedded. And so, you know, what is the next step? You know, how does that evolve? So if you can really get good controls around one particular part of the plant, then, you know, what if you could do that over a larger part of, say, the distillate train that you're trying to manage as well? So if you can widen that envelope and look at the wider part of the plant, then there's a lot more opportunity to look at uh, optimization. And eventually you can start thinking about, well, how can I optimize across the entire plant, right? And then you heard some of the speakers today talking about, well, even beyond that, you know, you know five, 10 years down the line, how am I gonna optimize effectively on real time across the entire value chain, right? As the pricing demands change, as the availability of stock changes, as all the different demands in the marketplace fluctuate. So going and taking that evolutionary step from kind of control over one area to a wider and wider footprint, that becomes pretty exciting. And uh, we see customers doing that, at least in large parts of their train. They're getting, you know, 10 percent plus improvements from those uh, efforts. And we're excited to see where that can go even further. So. Oh, fascinating. Well, Lawrence, uh, thanks for being with us today. We'll be watching and very anxious to see progress in the next uh, coming months. Yeah, we're well, looking forward to it. And uh, thanks again for your time. We've been speaking with Lawrence Schwartz. Lawrence is Senior Vice President and Chief Marketing Officer with Aspen Technology. Thanks for watching.